Hello. Me fixing everything. And because there is always some jump, jump to be made, today I will show you how to make a rose, rose what? Rose hip. Rose hip jump. So I made a made rose hip jump last year in England, and today I'll be making rose hip jump in Bulgaria. So I think all around the world the procedure is going to be exactly the same. First thing you need is to pick the right time in the year. That's in the middle of September. You need to pick the best uh, rose hips you can find. I'll show you in a second. Currently, we are in the forest side in Bulgaria, but whatever you can find the rose hip bushes, you can pick them and we'll go in a second further away from the house and we'll find some and I'll, I'll show you. You can, you can buy them from uh, the markets or from the people that are picking them but I'll show you every single step so the first step is pick the rose hips let's go and pick some so I have found a few rose hip bushes it's always good if you have some help what do you need to pick so the perfect rose hip is not very hard and it's not very soft either. If you if you squish it with your fingers, and it's getting squished, let's say like like this one. Can you see? This one is already dry even. Let's see this one. Yeah, this one is too dry. Ah, there we go. This is almost bad, but it's okay. It doesn't need to be very soft. I think this one is perfect. This one is good. So the way you pick it, if you're going to pick it yourself, just squish it between the thumb and the middle finger and snap it with the, with the pointing finger, just like this, and throw it in the bucket. So, what you need, it's depending on <clears throat> how much sugar you put in your jam. But last year I, I needed uh, 10 kilograms of rose hips. Enjoy the view as well. I don't know if you can hear the ship down the down the valley. Yeah. So keep going. Don't uh, don't pick the green ones. They need to be red. And when you squish it in your finger, I'll just bite it. It needs to be red like this one. Just red. Okay, let's continue picking. Okay, so after two, three hours, three people, we have this bucket with 11 kilograms of uh, rose hips. You can see some of them are a bit more orange. Some of them are more red than the others. So I recommend you pick the reddest you can find, but they still need to be hard so next step tomorrow we will uh, soak them in cold water yeah try to when you're picking them try to not pick the uh, back part as well only the fruit <coughs> and try to not get any leaves and stuff I don't well we'll need to clean them uh, after we soak them in the cold water, but still, the cleanest you can get them from the bush, the better. Continue tomorrow. Next day, I just moved the rose hips from this bucket to these two basins, and now I'll take cold water, the coldness you can get, and just cover them all with cold water. So we'll let them soak into the water for an hour, maybe two hours. They don't need any more. This will take off the uh, dirty dust you saw. I was in the middle of the mountain, but sometimes you might pick them close to the road and you don't want any road dust. 
bang on them. So just give them a good wash. Let them soak for an hour. And we'll get back. Can you see all of the leaves are coming on top? They're just floating on the surface. So uh, I'll leave them like that for an hour and we'll come to back, back to them later. Okay, so these are the rose hips after I think one and a half, two hours. I did the first batch, so I want to show you what I'm doing on the second one. So what are we gonna do? If you have them clean, it's enough to soak them like this and uh, just use the rose hips, but because we picked them three different people and one of us was not really clean picker, we have these leaves, we have uh, all sorts of uh, bad stuff going on. So we will put them straight into the sink. If we can. So all of them go into the sink. And now you need to boil them for until they're soft so when you squish them they need to be really soft meshy like so i think average is like um, two hours of boiling two and a half hours of boiling i both boil them on the what is this called in english high pressure cooker so what we're gonna do it's really simple just grab them like this there we go, and, well this one is not clean because I used it on the last batch, but let's uh, just give it a little clean. Okay, so, just grab them like so, I'll put them inside. And you can pick all of the leaves that you can see, all of the stuff. There we are. Just show. Can you show here? So just try to pick all of the bad stuff while you're doing it. If it's two of you, it's gonna be easier. Just put the bit somewhere closer. So I will be how we doing this. That's why you need to try to be as clean as possible when you're picking them. So you don't need to bother with all this stuff. Next time. Next time, yeah. Okay, just keep going. There we go. And if you're if using a normal uh, normal cooker, not a high pressure one, just fill it up to the top and boil them for two hours. If you're using a high pressure cooker, which I recommend because it's going to be a lot quicker, just fill it up up to here. Fill up with what one two fingers of uh, water on top and boil it for half an hour on the high pressure cooker. Okay, so I'll continue filling up and I'll show you when, when the... What is, what is called in English? The cooker? The tub? Pan? No, the pan. Yeah, the pan is uh, full with uh, rose hips. Okay, so... You almost filled up the pan. Oh, well, that's, that's alright. Let's fill up the cooker now. Okay, that's perfectly fine. That's a bit harder than the maximum, but take your risks with making jam. Okay, let's put it on the on the fire. Okay, now after it's ready, uh, 
after it starts boiling uh, we'll set a timer to 30 minutes and I will show you when it's done the next step now everything is being boiled and it's uh, ready so these are done that's how they look can you see how soft when when you go with the fork so they're being boiling in the pressure cooker for half an hour these here as well this design on this pressure cooker it's a old soviet union one and it's not cooking so well as this one so depending on what you're using it might vary but then product doesn't matter how you're cooking them it needs to be so soft so when you do that they're getting squished okay now we will uh, transfer them both into a basin and we'll uh, we'll uh, make them like uh, squash them we'll squash them that's what we're gonna do with them I just have one more batch to go and being boiled so uh, I just run out of space I'll empty this pan and I will have to boil this batch again and we will get back when everything is boiled together okay so we got the first two pans in this basin and now I'll take the third one this one is a bit cracked right here so we will just mine the crack Okay, now the next step is take one of these, plug it in the socket, just distribute everything evenly and you can see they're completely done because they're so easy to squash. So now I'll take my dear operator phone from her and she will start squishing them. You want to keep the grinder or whatever it is down because otherwise if you pull it out everything will get into some little drops less that you're gonna be really tough to uh, take out and to clean up. So continue doing it until you see this result. Okay so now when it's all been squished and grind it into a thin, thin uh, paste we need to extract the seeds from the actual fruity part so what we're gonna do you take two four spoons two three four spoons put them into a fine mesh or one of these I'm going directly into the bucket or we can go to another thing and in this way I will show you in a second you can separate the seeds from everything else you don't want the seeds in the jam otherwise uh, everything will get bad you can't eat the seeds they're too hard so I will show you now I think that's enough yeah. okay so now with the circular motion just like that go for uh, two three minutes and I'll show you when you need to discard the seeds so that's the finished part you can see how dry it is you can't take any anything anymore otherwise you'll get with too much uh, I don't know what is what is called very thin particles so on the next step you clog up the piece of fiber that you're gonna use so now you need to discard this take a big bin and just put it in the bin no no directly as a, never mind okay okay just like that I'm not gonna show you the next process, just take everything out, put a new one, take everything out, put a new one, and that's what you get on the bottom. That's what you need to get, it's very very thin, but it's still not thin enough, so after we're done, we will uh, need to go through a fabric. Mussing so you get cloth. Mussing cloth, okay. You can find it in uh, 
Welcome. We are called baby stores. Well, that's in England, but we can. I will show you what it is. It's very thin cloth. Okay, we'll go on the next step. Okay, so that's the finished product. Not the finish, but finished with the finished with the fine mesh. And that's what it's in the bin. I'll show the bin so you know what you need to throw away. Okay, and now the setup, muslin cloth. I don't know what is the translation. Uh, that that's in English, but uh, that's what they do the cheese with as well. That's the brown. I had a, a little bit of difficulty finding it in England. It was locked down last year, so. But got it from Royalco in England. You can you can have a look. That's how fine it is. Cheesecloth as well. Cheesecloth, yes. Cheesecloth. I found it like a cheesecloth. Okay, so bucket with material, muslin cloth, and then a clean bucket. So we will just refine this into even smoother uh, jam like uh, rose hips. So a few, a few of these into the cloth, and then. Actually, it takes some time for the cloth to get dampened, but we'll see. Okay, it will get really messy really quickly, but don't worry. Change your clothes, you don't want a good pair of jeans to go in the bin. Okay, so that's what you need. There we go, just like this. And a pair of gloves. Oh, and a pair of gloves, yeah, use gloves. Can you see how much smoother it is? Show in the bucket. This one, it's a lot smoother. Okay. Now. Just squeeze it and then what is going to be left inside in the cloth also needs to go in the bin. So let's open it. Everything will get in. Uh... So this material, scrape it with a spoon. Oh, I remember from last year. Scrape this thing with a spoon and don't contaminate. If you contaminate your gloves, wash in the sink and then run it again, otherwise if you get contamination, you contaminate the whole disc. So this one, all the inside, goes inside the bin, put a new one, squeeze it, put a new one, squeeze it, and I'll show you the product after. I'll show you now in the middle, we're in the middle of the whole process. Just put the cloth around this. Three scoops. One. And three. Now don't forget if you if you notice on the last video I was with the black shorts, the muslin cloth exploded while I was squeezing it, so don't forget change your clothes. So you're twisting and squeezing at the same time. Prepare yourself a spoon. You need a partner for that, that job, I don't think you can do it by yourself. Okay.
we could have squeezed a bit a bit more it's a bit uh, we got a bit of moist I think that's okay. okay and now the next one that's what basically it now another scoop and as I said I will show you the finished product when we're ready with the bucket the final product it's in total 8.8 .8 kilograms if you go to buy the jam from the shop it will have around 30 to 50 grams 100 grams of sugar uh, in it. We need to calculate how much sugar we want in our one. Last year I made a batch with 16 grams and with 25 grams and we preferred, I think all the people we gave it to it, preferred the 16 grams one. So we want 16 grams of sugar. How are we gonna calculate that? If we have, we will work in grams. 8.8 .8 kilograms is 8,800 grams and we want another 1200 grams 1 1.2 kilos of sugar so we have 10 kilograms in total in here in this basin we got 10 kilograms of stuff because we're gonna boil it now it will be reduced with 25 percent so this will it, it will end up only 75 percent so that's 7500 grams finished product and it will have 1.2 kilograms of sugar inside we don't count the sugar of the rose, rose hips. hips because I don't think it's relevant so we divide that by 100 because we want to know how much is in 100 grams 75 times so 1200 grams divided by 75 I'll end up with exactly 16 grams in our batch that's how if you just replace that 1200 with another uh, something else you can see what result we will get for yourself. Some people might prefer it more sugary, some people might prefer it a little bit less sugary, some people might want, don't want to put any sugar inside, so depend on your on the person. We we put normal crystal white sugar inside, nothing special, just whatever we can find in the shop. Just sugar. Uh, we have already put 1.2 kilograms inside just stir it and now we'll put it back into the pan and we will cook it <coughs> until we like the consistent consistency so that's the consistency at the moment you can see it's very viscous it's a uh, water like almost no it's not like water maybe a lot uh, a lot more viscous than a pancake mix we wanted something like a pancake mix Okay, so we'll put it on the water now. I think it's gonna boil for how much? Two, three hours? Yeah, something like that. One to three hours. So depending on the on depending on your uh, stove, because some some people might put it on a uh, more powerful setting. So depending on the setting you put it. So we'll put it in the in the pan now, and we will uh, start Boil. cooking and start boiling it. Okay, so transfer now to the pan. I just put it on the medium, on the medium stove. And now you need to constantly mix it. Otherwise, the sugars on the bottom will get burned, and you will have burnt taste in your jam, which you definitely don't want. So even if you don't start to mix in the beginning constantly, because you definitely don't want to spend three hours. <laughs> You need to mix it every minute or two in the beginning, but you'll feel it. You you don't need to. You just don't don't leave it on on too on hot its on its own, yeah, because it will get burned. And you waste so much time. Okay, I'll show you when it starts boiling. What I'm gonna do now? I'll take all the jars. Uh, they just went through the washing machine, uh, not washing machine dishwasher cycle and now we're gonna preheat them in the oven uh, what temperature they needed to have like 50 40 60 60 60 the microbes are dying on 60 degrees okay so 
we have all of the jars, you don't want any paper on the jars, so just jars that don't have paper. Okay, and one more, and this one, this one. The oven is going to be preset, preset up only on the top heater. I got this one extra strong, I think it's for pizza or something. Only on the top heater. And we're going to preheat them till they reach 60 degrees. We'll need a thermometer. I have an infrared. But the main point is when you put your hand, you can't touch it. So, can you open the oven? Yeah. Okay. I'll just hold the video. So it will need like maybe five minutes. What you're gonna do meanwhile, set up your table, just move all the stuff around, make yourself space. If you're using new jars, uh, it's good to wash them. I'm using uh, already used jars, so I have a brand new cup, brand new cups. So what we're gonna do with the cups, we'll take a, a big tub and preheat, preheat boiling water. We'll use boiling water. Start the video when the water is boiled. So I just put the cups inside this uh, cup. And now I'll just pour boiling water. Don't worry, the seal is rated up to 130 degrees on most of the cup. So nothing bad is gonna happen with them. There we go. Just so we can kill all the microbes or anything that can leave in them. Ooh, it's hot. Now, let's measure them. Okay, what is showing? 60, 66. The oven is a lot hotter on the back side, so mm -hmm. it's gonna be, we can see them. 130, don't worry. It's just my oven is a bit uneven. 130 on the back ones is really hot, so we'll start from these here and we'll continue forwards. Okay, I'll pull them out now. Okay, so we got the setup now. Jars, funnel for jars. There we go. Yeah, it's not going I don't think it's yeah. gonna fit. Yeah, okay. And just be careful because some of them are really hot. Okay, so just fill it up. What do you need now? Just fill it up, fill up the the jars. Don't leave them a lot of uh, air inside. That's really really interesting moment for me because you remember from where we started from the hill in the in the forest. That's a, I really like the final product. I think it's really interesting. I don't think this cup is gonna fit now. Okay, so I need a, another cup for this here. So, we'll keep filling. And when we get to the middle, I'll start uh, closing them, I'll show you. Okay, so now when we have the jar full... Take Use some, gloves? Yeah, but thick ones. These are heavy duty leather. You can see they're not that clean, but they went in the uh, washing machine three days ago, so... Okay. Uh, from the hot water, and it's really hot, so be careful. Take the cap and put it tightly, make it uh, flip it upside down and that's how you need to close them. I think we've pretty much finished, that's the last step before you can eat them. Make sure that the cap is tight, maybe the next step if you 
if you uh, want to be fancy, it's uh, put a nice label on the jar. Or if you don't want to be fancy, you can just put a piece of insulation tape and write on them <laughs> what is it. Because when you make so many types of stuff, you might get confused what is it. Okay, the jars are uh, co uh, hot enough so you can just... You don't need to preheat them while you're done, you'll be ready with all them. I think the, the last step do you think I need to show it tomorrow to open a jar maybe tomorrow so we can eat it on a piece of bread. We need, oh yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so last step before I uh, release the video because I was wondering should I re release it today. Uh, we'll just open a jar so we can uh, give it Taste a try. It. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well this one is empty, I can't close it. Okay, well, tomorrow we'll do the taste test. So, one day for, one day for picking and uh, one day for making it and uh, 365 days for eating it. So that's, a, that's a good thing. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow to tell you to subscribe to the video. It's the next day and we have some crepes, crepes, something like that. Uh, these two jars we left to one side, that's the finished uh, all of them, with the new caps. Be but be because this one was not firming very tight when I uh, screw it back on, we'll do a taste test. If you can open it. Ah, I, think it's, I think it's well opened, or not? No? Mm, it's really nice. Let's see how it spreads. I think it spreads nice as well. Well, that's the rose hips jam that we made. I hope the video has been helpful to you. Like and subscribe if you like it and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.